Tonight, while you might be unknowingly following advertisers on Twitter, denial of service attacks for sale by hackers, and the tech stories that defined 2014. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 245 for Tuesday, December 30th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Creating and editing your website is easier than ever using their redesigned interface, Squarespace 7, with integrations from Getty Images, Google Apps, new templates, cover pages, and more. Try the new Squarespace at squarespace.com and enter the offer code TECHNIGHT at checkout and you'll get 10% off. Hello, I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into today's tech feed. In fact, the last tech feed of 2014. It's going to be a good one. We'll start with William Shatner. He's in the news today because of his following list on Twitter. It turns out that the actor noticed that the Twitter account for MasterCard, the, you know, MasterCard, was showing up on the lists of accounts that he was following, even though he never actually followed MasterCard. He also noticed that for Dwayne Johnson, you might also know him as The Rock, also an actor, MasterCard was only one of two accounts that that actor was following. So what's going on? Turns out that Twitter allows advertisers to buy followers by promoting their accounts in Twitter timelines. Who to follow, search results, stuff like that. So the company says it also allows advertisers to put promoted accounts into the following lists of others but has since last year, it just kind of got noticed or at least got attention. And the tweets are marked as promoted, but is that clear enough for the average or the new Twitter user? From what we know of the Twitter masses, I say probably not. The Federal Bureau of Investigation is looking into whether hackers working for any U.S. financial institutions, banks, may have disabled servers that were being used by Iran to attack the websites of major banks last year. Two people familiar with the investigation are telling Bloomberg. So in other words, are the banks participating in revenge hacking is the question. The sources claim that J.P. Morgan Chase suggested exactly that, or someone did, during a closed meeting in February of 2013. But a spokeswoman for that bank says no action was ever taken. U.S. Representative Michael McCall, who's also the chairman of the House Homeland Security Committee, says that some companies who have been hacking victims in the past may be conducting offensive operations without getting permission from the federal government. Kind of shady gray area for this stuff. You might have been affected by the December 25th attacks against Sony's PlayStation Network and Microsoft's Xbox Live Network that kept players from enjoying online games. I'm sorry that your Christmas was ruined if so. Now the Lizard Squad, that's the name of the hacker conglomerate claiming responsibility for this downtime, says that the attacks were a marketing scheme for a new commercial distributed denial of service or DDoS attack. The service launched this morning and is fully operational, a representative of the Lizard Squad who goes by the alias Dragon told The Daily Dot. Customers can reportedly use the service against any target that they wish, like large websites or internet services, for anywhere between $6 and $500 paid via the cryptocurrency Bitcoin. Of course. Members of the group claim that they don't know what sites customers are targeting, though, because they don't keep any logs citing privacy reasons for criminals that I don't think that you should really believe. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the year of 2014. It was a wonderful year and it was a terrible year. It depends on who you ask. Uh, Devinder Hardwar, who's the senior editor over at Engadget, has agreed to join me to talk a little bit more about, from the Engadget side, what was big this year. Hello, Devendra. Hey, thanks for having me back. So, well, thanks for being here. And, you know, you're, you are our last guest of 2014 oh, yeah, for special. TN2. So this is, you know, it's a pretty hot ticket. Uh, but no, mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're thrilled that you were here uh, to join us. We, we had a crazy year. We got a lot of news mm -hmm. on wearables, maybe more news than, than actual wearables. Virtual reality yeah. is a big thing. You know, some, some, some crazy IPOs. Security was off the charts. What, what do you think where it was really you know, a defining story or stories of the year? I think, um, you know, throughout the year, we saw several big security stories, right? We saw the Target hacks. Uh, we saw the Home Depot hacks, uh, which affected tens of millions of people. And, you know, most recently, the Sony hack is putting all this data out there. Uh, the PSN, Xbox Live hacks have, like, affected gamers over Christmas. A lot of sad kids over the holidays. It's not great. Um, kind of a, it, it all makes it pretty clear that security has to be a bigger priority for a lot of these companies. Um, I remember reading about the Sony hack that, you know, they had had 
these uh, security experts kind of go in and talk to people, uh, kind of look at the extent of their security. And uh, it just wasn't up to snuff. And they've been warned for years. And ultimately, something like this ends up happening. So yeah, I think a lot of people are learning lessons from what happened to Sony. And honestly, to all of these other companies too. So hopefully, um, you know, we'll see more stringent security happening down the line, maybe two-step authentication uh, as a more regular thing for everyone. Yeah, you'd mentioned, you mentioned Target, you mentioned Home mm -hmm. Depot, you know, these, 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 these huge retail chains um, that, that, that have a lot of not only security issues, but money losses based on having to fix these security issues and find out what happened. And then you have a, an entertainment company like Sony and, and, and people in the know say, well, you know, the, the, right. the, the systems were, were completely out of date. They, you know, they, they, and the celebrity hacks too. That too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, but yeah. Well, so, okay. So, you know, are we to believe that because of the Sony debacle in 2015, these things <laughs> won't happen again? Because they always seem to happen, don't they? Yeah. I, I mean... It's sort of like I used to work in IT and I would tell people, you know, have a strong password, back up your data, do those things. Anybody who's watched, uh, you know, all t the Twit stuff over the years would know this. Uh, but these companies now have to actually pay attention and start doing what they tell their employees to do. So I think we will see a lot more companies paying attention to this. There can't be lax security anymore because uh, as Sony Pictures learned, you know, it could end up costing you tens of millions of dollars, could potentially affect the release of something huge. Um, it's really tough to tell what the hackers can do. So as senior editor over at Engadget, obviously you're you're looking at not only a lot of gadgets, but writing a bunch of stuff yeah. and, and, and you've got your own beats and your interests. I, where do you see the 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 industry going, I, it's, you know, virtual reality, of course, it, the, mm -hmm. that's one of those stories that I say, well, I sure read about how great it is. And I don't really know anybody who's talking about it in real world situations. Are mm -hmm. we just a little ahead of ourselves? Is the technology, is, is the consumer part of the technology just yet to catch up with what's possible? I think, um, you know, over the past couple of years, we saw the groundwork laid for like new VR from Oculus and from mm. a couple other companies who are kind of dabbling in this. But, you know, I got the Oculus, uh, the second development kit, and I've been playing around with it. I've tested out the Samsung Gear VR thing. Um, the Samsung Gear VR, surprisingly, is a, is a great little device. It's really complicated and you have to have a Galaxy Note 4 to use it. But the fact that you can have portable VR pretty much anywhere um, is kind of fascinating. So, yeah, I think I, we can see the pieces are in place um, for it to be big, uh, but the consumer stuff isn't there yet. The Samsung thing is mainly for developers. Um, Oculus stuff is still also for developers. Um, it's a really cool thing that exists right now, and I think that's more than we could say for VR at any point in the past couple decades. So VR is here, but it's not for everyone yet, but it's going to get there. Well, on a personal level, what were some of your favorite stories of, of, of 2014? Um, let me think here. Uh, I think some really interesting stuff was happening around Microsoft, right? They have a new CEO, right. kind of a new strategy in general. Um, and I like I like to look at the players, all the big companies, and try and kind of just follow their stories. I think uh, Microsoft's new CEO, Satya Nadella, is really interesting and is kind of pushing the company in new directions. Uh, they bought Microsoft. Uh, they bought my, uh, the Minecraft developer Mojang, mm -hmm. uh, which is interesting. And it'll we'll see, you know, where that goes. We kind of don't know what's happening there yet. And uh, they announced Windows 10. You know, even though there was there was no Windows 9, it's like they're trying so hard to get away from Windows 8. Um, so a lot of interesting stuff is happening with Microsoft. Um, you mentioned wearables. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have Android Wear. We have the Apple Watch showing up. We have a ton of other companies showing off their wearables. Uh, the Apple Watch is surprising too because uh, Apple showed this thing off months. I, I think it's going to end up being almost like half a year before we actually will be able to get the Apple Watch in our hands. And that shows that Apple was almost kind of forced into unveiling it to just show that it's in the game and can get you know other developers and things like that ready. Um, and uh, I don't know what else. Uh, Chinese smartphone makers. Xiaomi uh, right. just yesterday. Yeah, huge stuff. <laughs> uh, they got a big company. Of funding. Kind of grew like a weed it's in now, a way. Yeah. Yeah. It's now the world's biggest tech startup, technically bigger than Uber, which is insane. And we've seen Uber kind of blow up over the past year. Exactly. Uh, the good and bad with that, too. So a lot of really interesting stuff this year. I have to ask, because I know you're a movie buff and we did talk about mm -hmm. the Sony hacks. I, I assume that you've seen the movie, The Interview, and I would like to know what yes. your thoughts were. I think it's a pretty <laughs> it's an OK comedy. It's yeah. It's not like okay. anything special. 
Um, I don't. I think it's much better than like the Green Hornet, which was that <laughs> reboot they did, which was awful. Mm. Uh, but it's not as good as Neighbors or This Is the End, which are you know the last couple of Seth Rogen movies. I see. All right, so mm-hmm. maybe I should you know uh, legally download yeah. it after all. Exactly. You find it in many places now. <laughs> Devinder Hardwar is the senior editor over at Engadget. Thanks so much for joining us on our final, normal anyway, episode of Tech News Tonight. Before we let you go, let folks know where they can keep up with your work in 2015. Sure, you can find me on Twitter at twitter.com slash Devendra. Uh, I podcast about movies and TV at slashfilm.com, and I'm going to be writing about tech at engadget.com for a long time. Stay tuned for our CES Madness. Oh, CES Madness. I yeah. hope you get enough sleep. Bring the airborne. Yeah. Thanks, Devendra. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Bye. Coming up, Samsung's curved PC monitor and syncing a TV show to light bulbs. We will tell you all about how that works. But first, we're going to tell you about Squarespace.com because they're sponsoring this episode of TN2. Squarespace recently launched the completely redesigned interface, Squarespace 7, which makes it even easier to create your own professional website or your online portfolio, a space for yourself to show off what you're so good at or what you want to sell or pictures that you've been taking. Now, of course, running a website can seem kind of daunting, but Squarespace makes it really easy. You have live editing on a single screen. That means you make changes. It's very easy to do. You're not toggling around in the back end of some preview mode type of a thing. That's all been streamlined. You have 14 new designs, which gives you a total of over 30 to choose from. And these are really beautiful templates. They're designed for professionals. Squarespace has design templates for everything from artists or restaurant owners and chefs or or, or, or people putting together a wedding website or, or some sort of destination. E-commerce is involved as well. There's a new template called Flatiron, which features a grid layout using a lot of multiple images where you can showcase your best work or links to your best work. And you have access to Getty images. Speaking of imagery, Getty is the best for just $10 each. You can pick from thousands of professional Getty images and use them on your site right from within Squarespace. You have Google Docs integration, so Squarespace works with Gmail and Sheets and Calendar, whatever your Google Docs uh, of choice is. You have mobile apps so you can edit your blog and manage comments and check in on the go. And it's just easy to use. Squarespace is great. I've been using it for years. But every once in a while, I do have a question. Squarespace is really good with live chat and email support 24-7. Even if you're screwing around in the middle of the night, somebody will get back to you. It's also inexpensive. Starts at just $8 a month. And Squarespace takes care of hosting, so you don't have to. And you get a free domain name if you sign up for a year. Doesn't that sound good? You can start a free two-week trial with no credit card required, totally free, and just start building your website. Take a couple weeks. When you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use the offer code TECHNIGHT and you'll get 10% off. To begin using Squarespace 7, you might be an existing customer. You just go to the settings tab and activate all your new features. Thanks to Squarespace for the support of Tech News Tonight. Squarespace, start here, go anywhere. On to a few more stories that we're following on TN2 today. Today, Samsung announced the 1.7 Curved, which is a 27-inch all-in-one Windows machine that features, as the name implies, a bit of a curve in its screen, which the company says at least will trick your eyes into thinking that the display is even larger than it is. Now, under the hood is a 1 terabyte 5400 RPM hard drive with embedded flash drive, four USB ports, an SD card reader. You know, it's a decent little machine. Samsung will start shipping the 1.7 in the first quarter of 2015 for $1,299. Curved. It's all the rage. But that's not all in Samsung land. The company has also launched Milk VR, which is a service that will provide free 360 degree videos to anybody using a Gear VR virtual reality headset, which launched as a limited innovators edition earlier this month. Samsung partnered with Facebook's Oculus to create the headset, which is part of an announcement that also included a smartwatch and the Galaxy Note 4 phone. The Gear VR went on sale on December 8th in the US for $199. It also requires a Galaxy Note 4, which acts as its processor, its display, and its audio input. Output, rather. I said processor and pointed to my brain because, you know, that's how I think of things now. The Milk VR videos will also serve as a model for future filmmakers or maybe artists that are looking to take advantage of virtual reality as well as build interest and viewership for VR content. Milk VR joins Samsung's Milk Video and Milk Radio services. They just really like milk. 
Yesterday, we told you about Gmail access being effectively cut off in China. Today, according to some reports, as well as Google's own real-time traffic charts, at least partial service is being restored or seems to be moving in that direction. Chinese state-run media, the Global Times, is saying that maybe Google itself was the reason for the temporary outage and that, quote, we need to have faith that China has its own logic in terms of internet policy and it is made and runs in accordance with the country's fundamental interests. Now, for its part, Google says nothing was ever technically wrong on its end. The majority of Google services, including Search, Drive, and Gmail, have been blocked in China since June. Okay, this is a good one. All right, so there's a new sci-fi series on the network sci-fi, 12 Monkeys, which is based on the original Terry Gilliam film. And that movie wants to play with your light bulbs. I will rephrase that. If you have a Philips Hue lighting system installed in your home or maybe in your, you know, your home theater, it will be able to react to audio cues in the show's soundtrack that trigger a light track that adjusts the lighting to match the action on the screen. So, you know, maybe they're flickering if it's raining outside or that sort of thing. There's an explosion. Sci-Fi says that each of the 13 episodes has its own light track to help draw you into what's happening. You will also need to download the Sci-Fi Sync app that's only on iOS, which serves up videos, games, polls, and second screen features for whatever show you're watching. And the latest update does add control of your Hue lighting too. 12 Monkeys is the first of more shows that are designed to work with Hue going forward. Sci-Fi previously hooked into the Hue system on the soundtrack of the network's movie Sharknado 2. I did not see it and obviously I'm missing out. Well, that does it for Tech News Tonight in 2014. We will be back with regular shows on Monday, January 5th. But don't miss our special Twit New Year's Eve show, 24 hours of 2015. It starts at 3 a.m. Pacific time on December 31st. So for anyone watching this show live, that's less than 12 hours from now. And it goes for 24 hours through, th through 3 a.m. Pacific time on January 1st. We all hope to be standing by then. We're gonna be raising money for UNICEF as we ring in the new year. In every time zone live, Twit is, I mean, the people working behind the scenes are going completely nuts right now. This is gonna be a big production. Plus, you've got, well, I'm not gonna give anything away, but let's just see how Leo Laporte does staying up and hosting the entire 24 hours. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Thanks everyone for watching and listening to and spreading the word about TN2 in 2014. You can subscribe at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us at TN2 at twit.tv. And of course you can watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. Starting again Monday, January 5th. Good night and happy new year. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.